Uh, for now, I'll talk about uh, kind of the backstory of how I got here to Fearless and how, uh, how all this came to be. Some cool stories in it I got along the way. To say the least, I was a super nice guy. Like I saw Brian's video, the first video I saw from Brian was a video on what a nice guy was. And as I'm watching this video, I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> it's complete disappointment in myself, <laughs> you know. He's talking about all this stuff and I'm just like, man, that's totally me. And, you know, it's kind of messed up because in your head, as you're a nice guy, you go along life thinking that this is how you're supposed to be. And if anything, you probably take pride in being a nice guy. It's like, oh, I would never hurt a woman. I would never do that. I would never be like that guy. He's an asshole. You know, it's kind of like a pride, but when you hear, you watch a video like that, or, you, or if you read, for instance, uh, No More Mr. Nice Guy's book, you start to be like, all that pride that you had just kind of crumbles. You know, like, wait, so now I have to be that asshole? <laughs> so now I have to do everything I didn't want to do in order to get what I want. And that's what it felt like. So I watched this video and it was just resonating. It just kept hitting those points and I was like, okay. I mean, cause nothing's worked for me right now. I keep getting friends on every girl. I can tell girls are interested, but when I meet up with them, it literally goes nowhere. Like your dates on Tinder, go hang out, nothing, neutral. <laughs> it's just like, makes no sense. So uh, I came down and I saw Brian one night. That uh, was a Wednesday talk. And you, you guys obviously know Brian. He's very grounded, very solid. When he talks, he speaks right into you. And so I felt all these qualities that he had, and I was just like, damn, I'm so far away from that. Like that, I want, I want that. And so uh, it was pretty much a no-brainer after that talk to sign up for a workshop because everything that he was talking about made sense to me. It was like, okay, cool. In the workshops, we do model work. We'll get you in front of a model so, she, so we can see your unconscious behavior. What are you doing in front of beautiful women that you're not even aware of? And I was like, oh, it's just gonna change my life. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's smart. And so immediately I signed up, I was like, okay, I wanna do that for sure. And so uh, that workshop was probably maybe a month out from the time I signed up. Up until that point, I was actually, I had a girl. Who actually, it was, there's always a pain reason that guy's coming to personal growth, I think. And this is mine. Because uh, I had, there was a girl, I know her name is Bianca. And it was a friend of a friend of a girlfriend I have. And she was clearly interested in me in some way. Like she would come hang out, she'd come over to my house, we'd record music together and all this stuff. And so in my head I was like, okay, cool, she's coming over to my house. This is, it makes sense, like she's into me, why else would she, would she be coming over? And so I knew it, but I just didn't know how to make it happen. Right? I was trying too hard or, you know. So she'd come over, she'd flirt a little bit, she'd touch, grab my shoulders and stuff, they'd touch my arms on stuff. And I was like, okay, cool, she's feeling me, that's what's up. I was like, at some point sex is gonna happen, but it never fucking happened. <laughs> like it just never happened. And so, um, cause I was a very nice guy again. I was trying to make it happen, not by means of being direct, but by beating around the bush to make it happen. Cause I was way too scared to be very direct about it. Cause I had sexual shame, right? And I didn't want her to feel bad. I didn't want her to feel offended by, my, by me, me being a sexual person. And so I just neutered it and that never happened. And thank God that workshop came, because when that workshop came, it exposed to me a lot of what was going on beneath the surface, which was a bunch of anxiety, a bunch of just fear of, of pe not just women, but people in general. Like just being able to look at a person in the eye for a couple seconds felt really difficult. Like I wanted to pull away, look away. My body was just kind of cringing on the inside. I felt this judgment, you know, self-judgment, doubt, all this stuff that was coming up. And uh, I never realized I had so much of it until we had to look at it head on. And so uh, I'm glad we did, because in that workshop, it kind of opened up a lot of things for me. Like it was a three-day workshop, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You go back to your regular life Monday. <laughs> so Monday came and it was nothing like my regular life on Monday. <laughs> so I work at a huge library and it's probably got about 300 workers in it. Uh, it's, called the, it's called the LA Central Library, really huge library. And it's got a lot of women in there who work in that library, a lot of attractive women. And up until that point, I would see these girls walking in the aisles. I would see these girls coming up to pick, pick up books from my department. And I always thought there was, you know, there was always a little connection with each of them. There's a little something there, a little long, prolonged eye contact, something like that was going on. But it wasn't until that Monday I went back to work that all of it just kind of really started to blossom because I now wasn't scared to look at people. I also wasn't scared to talk to people. And so it was almost like immediately that Monday came and I had a couple girls' numbers because going back to work, it was just like, okay, cool, I can look at you now. I can talk to you now. Now I can clearly see that you're attracted and I clearly see this, this flirtation going on, whereas before, I couldn't look at you long enough to be able to tell that. And so, I was like, damn, this is so amazing. Like, sure, I didn't turn into sex right away, but I do remember thinking, this is crazy, I gotta get back around these guys. I gotta get back into one of these workshops. So again, Brian has this thing where it's like, if you take the experience workshop, you can assist for free. Um, if there's a, you know, 
whatever the next workshop is. So in, anyway, things are working from the time I took that workshop until the next one. I was having these coincidences, not coincidences, I was having these situations or these, or these experiences where I was just meeting more women. I was being more risque, I was trying more things, more things were popping off, I was having, I was making out with girls, things like this were happening, and I was kinda like, okay, it's kinda cool. I think two of those girls I work with, I ended up hooking up with them. And I was just like, okay, this is interesting, so I just gotta keep showing up around these guys. Every time I would come to a workshop, even just to assist or just sit in the back of the room and not even be a part of the workshop, but just sit, like you guys are kinda sitting right now just hearing us talk, you guys are probably taking on some of that energy that we're, that we're giving you guys, and come Monday, you guys are probably gonna be out there talking to women. <laughs> it's just because you guys are taking on the energy, right? So same thing, I was sitting in the back of the room and just kind of being a part of it in the background. Monday would come again, boom. It's like another level, I would just go up another one, another one, another one. And I was just like, this is crazy, dude. I gotta get into another workshop. <laughs> I actually gotta be a student in another workshop. And so it's kind of like the concept where it's like, you start to see things actually working for you. And it's like, why, do you, why would you stop? The things are working, they can only get better. So they were really just stripping layers away, stripping layers of anxiety away, stripping layers of fear away. So. What I did was I took another workshop. I took a three-month workshop, and uh, Brian was um, Brian in that workshop. I remember because I was really interested in dating. Right, that was my huge thing at the time. How do I get more free sexually? How do I become more confident? How do I how to be a little more risque? Right, because I was very bound up. I felt. And uh, in this workshop, he was like, "Okay, cool." He was like, "Your next assignment," because we got weekly Zoom calls. He said, "Your next assignment is to go out." and I want you to blatantly be sexual with a girl that you talked to in an approach. He was like, yeah, just bring up sex, just start talking about it. And I was just like, fuck, I had all these, I had all these stories around being sexual and being judged and having a girl call security on me or calling somebody because I said something sexual or something foul. And as you'll say it in my heart, I was like, I don't know if I can do it. And so um, I, I did do it and I went to, I remember I went to Hope Foods, I told this story so many times so far. I went to Whole Foods and I saw this lady in uh, wearing yoga pants and, you would always see girls in whole foods with yoga pants on. It's just like a, like they go hand in hand almost. <laughs> <laughs> so I went up and I was just kind of like, okay. I was like, you look sexy in those yoga pants. Like it took me a while because I remember standing there and the, I was literally standing there and my heart was just kind of beat. You know, you, you know, we do this creepy thing, guys, right? We stand in for a little bit before we go in, which is like the heart's beating. It's like, I can't think of a girl now. And you start to walk, your heart's kind of even more. <laughs> And so I knew the way it came out was shit, <laughs> but it came out and she smiled and it didn't go anywhere, but she smiled and she didn't call security. You gonna tell us what you said? Huh? Yeah, I told her to say you look sexy in those yoga pants. I said, yeah, look absolutely sexy in those yoga pants. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, at yeah, the Whole Foods. You always did that. Huh? You always went to the Whole Foods. No, I did that. Yeah, I did do that. <laughs> yeah, because it was my assignment. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> um, he was ready for that. He was yes. vulnerability and presence to do that. I wouldn't yeah. tell everybody that. Mm -hmm. If somebody's completely in their head, I would not tell them. That. Yeah. Okay. No, it's true. Because in, in that in in that workshop, the three month workshop, we were pretty much building up. So it's wherever you were, he'd give you the next step up that you need to do. So I was already kind of getting comfortable with approaching girls, talking to girls a bit more, but I wasn't ever pushing any sexual tension. That's why I wasn't really going anywhere. I could get some girls, but he was like. Now you need to start being more direct about your sexual intention because that's what you want. So be a little bit more clear. And that's what that was a part of. And uh, I remember leaving that Whole Foods that day and I was fucking shaking. My body was shaking. I was like, I just committed a crime. <laughs> 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 and, but I walked back to work and I was smiling the whole way back. This was, this was on the lunch break. I walked over there and I was just smiling. I was like, damn, she looked good. <laughs> she looked good and that was amazing. And so, um, you know, with a little bit more practice in doing that over and over, I got a little bit more confident with it. And then as time went by, just doing it, it didn't feel like there was this huge fear anymore. It was just more like an appreciation, if anything. When I tell a girl that, it's more of an appreciation. I want her to feel that appreciation. Even now to this day, it's like that. It's like when I do it, it's just like, I want her to know that that's what I think about her. So anyway, that's, that's still earlier on in Fearless. That's like, the first, that's like in the first, I don't know, three months of me doing work with Fearless. Again, I started off, when I first started Fearless, I had never approached a girl in my life. Actually, the first approach I saw was in my first workshop. One of the, his, one of the students went to go approach a girl, and my whole body cringed when I saw him going over there to talk to her, because I was like, in my body, it was just like, you don't just go talk to girls like that. It's scary. I thought he was going to get slapped. And so, it's kind of crazy. Three months later, I'm telling girls in, in Whole Foods how sexy they are in yoga pants, you know? It's kind of trippy. So, very short period of time. And so, again, you know, 
rinse, repeat. I was like, okay, now I want to do more, more work with these guys because they're obviously digging into more layers. So like, I'm getting a lot more confident being a little bit more sexual. And that was earlier on. I hadn't even taken like sexual transportation workshop, which is a whole nother beast of, of sexual layer coming off, sexual shame coming off. And so anyways, they do the, we do a week long workshop in Bucharest. And uh, you take taking that one soon. We do a, uh, we do a week long in Bucharest. And so basically it's like the experience, but it's literally, you're getting like five hours of model work a day. And we got like 10 models, we are swapping them out. It's insane how that workshop functions. Um, and so that's a really good one to be in a contained space, but to also be in a place where all your shit can come up in a, in a contained space where we can all support you. And all your insecurities are gonna come up, all your fears are gonna come up, all your, your, hold, all your holdbacks and your hangups around women dating, you know, all that stuff starts to come up. And so I wanted to be a part of it. And thank God there was a seat left. So I got in that seat and um, went out to Bucharest, went out to Eastern Europe. And again, more layers just being shaved off. So now I'm doing risque air things. Like I'm approaching girls who are with their moms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm approaching girls who are with their boyfriends. Just because again, this, this, this work is about your belief in yourself. And when you, when you start shaving off those layers, like Brian says, you guys are already naturally confident men. Like all the stuff that I'm, that I'm doing, that's already who you are. Everything that's on top of that stuff is just things, the stories that have been caked on, societal stories that have been caked on, family stories that have been caked on that you're just trying to shave off. And so it's actually funny when you approach a girl who's got a girl, for, who's got a boyfriend with her, you approach a girl with her mom, it's not bad. It's just your, it's just, what's your energy like when you do it, right? You know, and if you're doing it from a sweet place and you're not doing it to be like a dick or an asshole, you get all kinds of crazy responses. Like the guy doesn't worry about it. He's like, oh, no, nah, this is my girl, right? Because it's, it's all in your energy. So again, what was happening was I was starting to become more of a, like Ryan calls it, a, more of a natural, right? Where I wasn't trying to be like a pickup guy. I was just more like, cool. I'm just curious to know, like, is that your boyfriend? Like, boom. It was interesting. So I was getting so many interesting results in that workshop, in that particular one, especially in Bucharest. And uh, I actually had a lot more stories than I actually gave myself credit for. Now that I think about it, because now, now that I think back, I had a lot of dates. But I was like, in my head, I was like, I want sex, I want sex, I want sex. And so I wasn't hitting that. But I was getting a lot of crazy little one off experiences. Like the girl, for instance, who was with her mom. Like I approached her with her mom at a table, and they were from Ireland. And, uh, I asked her mom, I said, look, I said, your daughter's beautiful. I said, can I take her with me for like an hour or two? And she didn't speak English, so she had to talk to her mom in their, <laughs> in their language. And her mom was like, okay, but you have to have her back in an hour. <laughs> said, okay. I was like, awesome, cool. <laughs> so I took her, I took her and uh, I, went, I took her to this bar. It's called the Sky Bar. And we all know, everybody who's been to Bucharest, Bucharest knows the Sky Bar. It's a very small city. Um, so I took her up to the bar. And I don't know, maybe 15 minutes into the bar, I had my hands like up her shirt, I'm like touching on her breast. I'm just like, wait, who am I? <laughs> who the fuck am I right now, yo? Cause this is definitely not me normally. <laughs> I was like, if her mom knew what was going on right now, she would not let me take her. <laughs> but uh, you know, little things like that, that, I also wasn't giving myself credit for cause I was just like sex. And it, that didn't end in sex, so I was kicking my own ass cause I still have my own stories around like confidence, Oh, because it ain't sex, I'm not, I don't feel, you know, I don't feel special, I don't feel valuable. You know, I have my own shit coming up. So I would always just kind of not think about those stories too much. That same thing happened like a day later with a different girl I met in the square. Same thing, 15 minutes later, and same thing, Sky Bar, hands up her shirt again. I was like, okay, these are cool experiences, <laughs> but none of them are leading to sex. So I was kicking my ass about that, <clears throat> uh, not really realizing the wins that I was having. So uh, anyways, man, long story short, that workshop ends, I get back to LA. All of a sudden, I'm just realizing, like, damn, it's, it's, it's gotten really easy to talk to women. Like, it's gotten really easy to talk to women. And uh, so I was, having more, I was having more experiences. I was going on more dates. Girls would come to the library to check out books. I was flirting with them at the counter, getting their numbers, going on dates with them at the work. Um, There's just so many of them, like, so many stories I don't even remember looking back on it. So uh, anyways... I say all that to say that everything was changing really, really fast. And this is all within like now at this point, it's probably like six months after, do after starting the first workshop. That's not a long time, as far behind as I was. And so uh, I wanted to go to Bucharest again. This is probably like, I don't know how many months later, it's probably like another three or four months later, I had another workshop in Bucharest. And I was like, fuck, I gotta go back. Cause again, guys, it's like, 
in a weird way, it's like you're getting everything you want. Why would you, why would you ever stop? You know what I mean? If you got something that's working for you, that's functioning, or even also if you know yourself, like I know myself, if I wasn't in the contained space, I probably wouldn't keep consistency with any of that work. Like, cause I had a history of that, right? Like sure, I might grow a little bit, but I might just fall back into that old place because it was very comfortable. I mean, that was only six months of growth. You know what I mean? Versus like at the time, what, 28, 30 years of being in that comfort, that comfortable setting that you're raised in, with the stories that you've always been raised in, not kind of not breaking out of that. <laughs>